The Louisville-Kentucky rivalry is one of, if not the most, fierce in the nation. Within the 70 miles that separate the campuses of UofL and Kentucky, a visceral hatred is vehemently shared among the respective fan bases. It's a matchup that has provided both schools with moments that will live on forever in this storied rivalry. For Louisville's best, let us rewind to 2008. This was a team that Kentucky fans found particularly, let's say, um, unpalatable. Maybe it was the Patino effect finally getting to them since Rick was starting to have success at UofL. Maybe it was the way Louisville played with flair and celebrated each basket like a game winner. Maybe it had something to do with how Earl Clark's jersey was never tucked in. Like, never tucked in. But it was likely because while Louisville was competing for national championships, Kentucky was turned down by Billy D and had to settle for Billy G and was just hoping to get into the tournament and get Perry Stevenson some pop darts. The season was off to a rocky start for the Cats, but Louisville had some early season hiccups as well. Losses to WKU and Minnesota for starters, then a more shocking defeat just before they were to play Kentucky. When the two teams met up on New Year's Eve, the Cardinals were clearly the better team on paper, but the first two months had shown that they were vulnerable. Kentucky would keep themselves within striking distance throughout the contest, and they even took a second half lead on this putback by Patrick Patterson. And that's when old Billy Clyde inserted himself into the game. A technical foul allowed Louisville to tie things up at 43 and go on a run that seemed to bury the Cats. So down seven with a minute left, Kentucky needed a miracle. And they got a good start with Jody Meeks getting fouled on a three-pointer. Meeks would make all three because he's Jody Meeks. Then Earl Clark would not have his best moment in an untucked Louisville jersey. A turnover on the inbounds pass led to a quick Wildcat score, cutting the lead to two. Clark then threw it away again. Then, in an attempt to redeem himself, fouled Jody Meeks again. It would be the fifth for E5, and he would have to watch from the sidelines as Meeks tied the game at 71. Now with the game on the line, the ball was in the hands of point guard Edgar Sosa, who had had some ups and downs this year. Just before the game, Rick Pitino pulled him into his office and told him to start looking for other places to play, encouraging the guard to transfer. He was on the verge of losing playing time to an all-time Cardinal fan favorite, Andre McGee. But here he was, the ball in his hand, game on the line. Michael Porter backed off, and then a bold decision. Sosa rose to shoot from 25 feet out with four seconds on the clock. If he misses this, Pitino might be inviting him to transfer vociferously. But this was Sosa's day, and it's a moment both fan bases will never forget. Sosa's had a great game today. Oh, and then the shot, 2.3. He knocks in the triple. A little bit later, we'll show you the most memorable moment from Kentucky's perspective. For now, for WHS 11, I'm Stephen B.